Massimo, cognition, emotion, even consciousness are the core of mind, what we call mind or mental faculties. Uh, take me through the evolutionary theory of how these different faculties of the mind, to use an old term, um, uh, have arose or may have arose. <laughs> There's not much to say there. We don't, we don't know a lot about how Well, that's they a lot arose. to say if you don't know. That's right. <laughs> Look, the, one of my favorite geneticists of the last century, Richard Lewontin, oh, yeah. was once invited to, to write a paper about the evolution of cognition. And I still remember very clearly the last words of that paper. He said, it would be nice to know how cognition, whatever that is, evolved, but we can't, tough luck. <laughs> and that was the way he ended the, 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 the paper. Now, I think that's a little too pessimistic. We do have some idea uh, to put out there. For one thing, we know that emotions are widespread across different animal species. And that is the, our way into an understanding of evolution of anything is when that something, that trait is widespread among different taxa so that we can look at it phylogenetically from the point of view of the relationship between these different taxa, right? So we know mm. that in order, as far as we can tell, in order to experience emotions and to have some level of consciousness, uh, you have to, to have some kind of brain or brain-like structure. Mm. So for instance, I don't believe the plants uh, experience emotions and things like that. I'm a plant biologist. Uh, plants mm. do, in fact, respond to the environment, of course, like every organism does, but it's got nothing to do, as far as we can tell, with the way in which animals do it. So emotions are a way to, in a sense, uh, perceive and respond appropriately to the environment. They are triggered by certain environmental circumstances, either internal or external. And they are a signal to the animal that a certain response is appropriate. And think about fear, for instance, right? Uh, the, the fight or flight response, which follows the exposure to a potential danger and the flight of adrenaline in, in, in the brain, that obviously seems to be adaptive. It's the kind of thing that you sure. would expect evolution would, in fact, favor. So at a very basic level, we do have an understanding of the function of the emotions and the function of certain degrees of consciousness. Notice that this is the second time that I say degrees of consciousness. A consciousness, I think, does come, in fact, in degrees, like a lot of things, actually, in biology, like a lot of uh, processes and, and, and structures in biology. So we should never think in terms of yes or no. Some things have it, some things don't have it. As far as I can tell, in the animal world, there is always a level of consciousness. Um, yeah, this depends on how you define terms very precisely. Absolutely. Different people have different views on that, obviously, e even pure physicalists in terms of where consciousness come in. But it, it, it largely has to do with the definition of what you mean, phenomenal consciousness or intellectual consciousness or emotional. Uh, let, let me just ask a specific question. Uh, to have emotion, do you need a phenomenal consciousness? Or can you have emotion with a so-called philosophical zombie? A reaction. No, I don't believe that philosophical zombies are a thing, uh, or could be a thing. Of course, they are not. They are not a thing. Well, I mean, just describe it this way: Is emotion? Do you need a phenomenal consciousness to have emotion? Because you use the example of a plant reacting to the environment, in some, you know, pulling back its leaves or selling right. out or sending its roots or sending its branches. I mean, it's reacting to the environment. Right. In a sense, the emotion is a reacting to the environment. Correct. So, so, I, so, I, so I, I would rephrase what you just said in this in the following way, that you do not need phenomenal consciousness in order to react to the environment. Plants do it, okay, bacteria so that, do it, okay. all sorts right, of right, stuff right, right. does okay, it. That's obvious, yes. But when it comes to emotion, our best understanding is that yes, you do need, in fact, that is what an emotion is. It is. Okay. It implies some level of internal perception of what's going on, or of, of therefore awareness of... Uh, phenomenal experience. Now, we're not talking about accepting human beings and in a few other uh, complex <clears throat> brained animals. We're not talking about self-awareness. We're not talking about self-consciousness yet, yeah. right? Uh, although that's, no, to that's, some extent- It's very helpful to, to, because that helps us understand what an emotion is as opposed to a reaction to the environment. Because right. every level th li uh, living thing, almost by definition of a living thing, reacts to the environment. That's Correct. one of the definitions of life. That's so right. then when do you go from just reactions to the environment to something that we would call emotion? Correct. The, I think that the, the 
breaking point there is in fact having a brain or something like a brain. In other words, that kind of machine or internal machinery, as opposed to the internal machinery that say plants or or bacteria have. It has to do with the materials involved. It has to do with the quality of the interactions between these materials. It has to do with the speed of interaction between these materials. Mm -hmm. uh, plants re do react to the environment, but much they're much slower, slower right? Uh, because they don't need to uh, to react in uh, in, mm -hmm. in a fast fashion. I mean, if you move around like an animal, then yeah. you do need fast reaction times. But right. if you're literally rooted to your spot, <laughs> yeah, you can't like do anything plant, anyway. You can't do it anyway. Right? <laughs> yeah. So it's a, it looks like evolution took different routes, as it often does, sure. uh, depending on what the specifics of the living organism in question is. Uh, so articulate those three concepts, cognition, emotion, and consciousness. Um, are, are they all three always wedded together? They all they need to be there. Certainly, we think you can have cognition, some kind of cognition, some kind of intelligence, uh, without phenomenal consciousness. Uh, some sort of a of a of a reaction to the environment. I mean, again, tech, it depends what you mean by these terms. But how do that those terms articulate together? That really gets to the crux of the matter because the, there is deep disagreement there in terms of when it comes to the definitions. And depending on what definition you start with, yeah. then you're already slanting the right, whole discussion right, in a certain direction. For instance, uh, these days we talk a lot about artificial intelligence. Yeah. Well, is it really intelligence? Well, it yeah. depends on how you define yeah. intelligence. Yeah. And once you define it in a certain way, then yes, the answer is, of course it is. Yeah. But if you define it in a different way, then the answer is no, that's, that's got nothing to do with intelligence. Right. Um, that's why cognition is a particularly slippery term, I think, because if by cognition you mean the ability to, uh, you know, perceive and act, let's say, uh, appropriately on external stimuli, then pretty much every living organism has cognition. But if by cognition you mean something like, you know, the ability to think more or less deliberately about a problem and trying to find a solution, then very few organisms <laughs> actually have that okay. level of, of cognition. And again, I think it might help thinking in terms of levels of cognition. So, so then the next question is, are these elements, all three of them, cognition, emotion, consciousness, are they all gradients? Uh, is it a spectrum? Is it smooth? In, are there step functions of significant transitions in, in any of the three? Or is the phylogenetic history pretty much Linear. I mean, it's never perfectly linear, right. obviously. But it is, you know, the general uh, uh, process. You you can, as in the fossil record or any other place, uh, a fairly uh, ho homogeneous progress as opposed to significant jumps. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I do think that there is. It's a continuum, but I don't see any particular reason why that continuum has to be smooth and and. Uh, gradual. Uh, yeah. I, Im I can imagine step functions here and, and there. For instance, there are major differences in cognition and in the sophistication of the emotions, even between human beings on the one hand, the, the presumably the hominid lineage in general, although unfortunately we're the mm -hmm. only ones left uh, of that lineage. And let's say a lot of other uh, primates, even, even including our close cousins. And that has something to do with the fact that the human brain is highly specialized. The two hemispheres are highly specialized. They're mm -hmm. highly dimorphic. They're mm -hmm. very different from each other. They do different things. Uh, you can have a fairly large brain, but if there is no specialization of, of that kind, then you're much more limited in the kind of cognition that you can have. So now, did that happen overnight? Probably not. Nothing in evolution happens mm -hmm. overnight, but it might have happened fairly quickly. And it, it, it whatever temporal scale, you might want to look at it, it may very well look like a step function uh, or a very, very steep uh, acceleration. Yeah. Of and, and, and you always look for critical mass kinds of uh, uh, events. Uh, the introduction of language, for example, is that yes. a, a, there are different opinions, of course, of, of, of how long that took. Some people think it was extremely a, a short period of time. Others think it's extended over a longer period of time with some evolution from you know, gestures or music or some other thing and took a long time. So, I mean, these are, these are the critical questions to ask. They are critical questions to ask. We don't have uh, definitive answers to those questions, but I am convinced on the basis of my understanding of the literature, for instance, that yes, language did evolve fairly f quickly and that human beings are the only animals at the moment with language. 
plenty of other animals communicate, and sometimes they communicate in sophisticated fashions. But if by language you mean, like most linguists do mean, a, uh, a, a system of iterative uh, structures that can be combined in an open-ended fashion, then pretty much human beings are the only ones that have it. And that has made huge differences, as we know, in terms of uh, not only biological, but cultural evolution for human beings.